The British Chamber of Commerce Philippines, or BCCP, has made it part of their mission to promote the UK and the Philippines' trade relations. They have successfully held trade missions in support of the Philippine economy. Joining us now from Portugal is BCCP Executive Director Chris Nelson. Chris, great to have you with us. In May, BCCP successfully hosted a trade mission bringing eight UK companies to the Philippines. Will there be more trade missions this year? Yes, there will be. So first of all, we've got a virtual trade mission, which will be on the 15th and 16th of uh, September with the Kent County Council. Uh, this is going to focus on food products, on drink, on healthy snacks. Uh, and I thank, thank you for referring to the meat mission, which we just had. That was actually on the 17th and 18th of May. And, and I want to link it to your story also on food and inflation. Uh, obviously, British pork is now coming in. And obviously, that's part of the way of ensuring that obviously that brings down the prices. And I'm pleased to say, actually, British pork for the first four months is up actually 46% in terms of its imports into the Philippines or exports mm. from the UK, and actually makes the Philippines a very key market now. I think it's actually just after China. So yes, more activities, and we're going to continue on and support the pledge of the president, which was to make is to make the Philippines an investment destination. So what does this uh, trade mission of uh, food and beverage companies from the UK hope to accomplish? Well, what we hope to accomplish by that is to actually match them with Filipino partner companies to get them to introduce to the market and therefore see the opportunities of the Philippines. The other thing I'd like to say here, Rico, is that we've always advocated that while the Philippines on itself is a very important market, we want to see it as a gateway to Southeast Asia. And therefore, these companies that are coming in from Kent, Sussex, these are the southeast areas of England, mm -hmm. uh, there'll be an opportunity to meet Filipino partners, introduce them to the market, and get them to successfully do business here, and then be able to use the Philippines to branch out into other countries. All right. Now, um, have they basically, have uh, you targeted the which particular food and beverage companies uh, from the Philippines that could export to the UK? Yeah, we've done both, actually. So we work closely. So we have obviously, first of all, we have over 300 members. A significant portion of them, of course, are obviously in the food and beverage sector. We've also worked together with, of course, people like in the Philippine Trade Commission in the Philippine Embassy in London. And therefore, we're overall very optimistic here on the two-way trade. Of course, we do this in also conjunction and support work closely with the British Embassy. So the Philippines is clearly one of our, our is, is a main focus area. Uh, we obviously see a lot of opportunities. Uh, and we're going to reference back, of course, to President Marcos's State of the Nation address. We we're very pleased to see that he made references to the liberalization laws that we were strong advocates for. And of course, now clearly pushing for and making and reinforcing the Philippines as an investment destination. So, Chris, is the newly amended Foreign Investments Act and the Public Services Act already attracting new UK investments to the Philippines? I think it's starting to, Rico. It's still early days, but we're actually taking a, a good opportunity to publicize that. We publicize the retail trade law. We're also going to do, obviously, work, obviously, communicating now to companies on the Public Services Act, the Foreign Investment Act, and I think it will do so. And, and I think what's key here is to keep that momentum moving forward. Uh, as I said, we strongly want to make the Philippines not only that companies see it as an opportunity, and it is an important market in its own right, but also that it is going to be very important they can invest and then develop their business throughout Asia, Southeast Asia. And of course, we haven't mentioned the fact that by coming here, they'll be able to obviously benefit from the Philippine workforce and the highly talented workforce that exists here. Are there plans for uh, President Marcus Jr. to visit the UK soon? Uh, to attract uh, British foreign investors uh, into the country? I would not know that, to be honest, but we would certainly welcome it. Obviously, he has strong ties with the UK. Mm -hmm. he, he went to university there. We know that he's, he's a very strong you know, uh, advocate. He's got good, very good relationships with the UK. Uh, and I'm sure I would like to say I sincerely hope he will do that. Uh, obviously, those are discussions that the government of the Philippines and the UK would be having, but... It would be a great uh, opportunity. 
And we like to see that. And, and we'll just further reinforce the very good relations we have here between the UK and the Philippines. Uh, as you know, our ambassador, Law Bofis, is here, and she's uh, made a very good start. She's been here and obviously reinforcing that. And I think this was last year, was actually, or this year, was the 75th year of diplomatic relations between the two countries. So, yes, uh, we would strongly advocate it. But obviously, uh, we know that obviously the president is extremely busy. But if, uh, I'm sure that that's between mm -hmm. the two governments. But it'd be warmly welcome and reinforce the close ties that already exist. The last time we spoke, we talked about RCEP, uh, Chris. President Marcos made no mention of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership during his State of the Nation address. How important that it is ratified and implemented? Well, look, I think it is important. Uh, I mean, it's also listed by Secretary Pasquale of uh, Department of Trade and Investment uh, as one of the priorities. Uh, we think it will be a great opportunity for the Philippines. Uh, I'd just like to say that we have an event next Monday with a lot of other chambers, which is the Joint Economic Briefing, and we're very pleased to say Secretary Pascual will be there. What we want to see, of course, we think that RCIP would open up and give opportunities. We know, of course, that there are you know, concerns, particularly in the agricultural sector, but that only covers, I, we believe, only 35 tariffs and the opportunities in upsides are even higher. So we would strongly urge it to be, to be ratified, and obviously we'd like to see that going forward. Uh, and uh, obviously, as I stated before, it's part of DTI's priorities, so we'll mm -hmm. see how it moves forward. BCCP Executive Director Chris Nelson, joining us from Portugal. Thank you so much for your insights. And straight ahead on